All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego and it's extremely sunny today. So what a great day. And I'm sure with my next guest, I'm sure it's, it's equally nice and sunny in Southwest Florida as I introduce you to Jason Cutter. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. And it's a mostly sunny day here. It's a little cloudy. It's getting to that time of year where you know we got the tropical storms that come through every day for for a brief period. So keeps it interesting. Absolutely. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, here we go selling with authentic persuasion. Because here's an interesting thing. Um, Jason is probably I would say without fail the first marine biologist I've had on the program. Um, but actually a marine biologist who turned into a sales mentor and, and sales trainer and helping people sell with authenticity. So maybe, maybe just as a set the background, Jason, your, your journey from marine, marine biologist <laughs> to, to sales. Yeah. So, um, the punchline of, of the marine biology side was as a result of being an awkward, late blooming only child who was bullied and left out and and also the product of two analytical parents, a banker and an engineer. My mom, the banker, uh, hated salespeople and instilled that on me. Um, at one point, I was on a boat uh, and we were surrounded by great white sharks. And that was still the safest and best career choice versus dealing with humans and people in any job I could think of. Um, then I I found uh, by going into the restaurant business and and busting tables, I didn't want to deal with hungry people for sure. Uh, I found I was actually pretty good with people. Marine biology didn't work out. I didn't want to go get a master's degree. Went to Microsoft for a few years, did tech support, realized I didn't want to do that either. And then at 27, got my first sales job. I'll use air quotes. It was in the mortgage business. It was the height of the real estate boom, the start of the real estate boom. So it was pure order taking. I didn't learn anything about mm -hmm. sales until years and years later. Um, and that kind of kicked off what I realized in retrospect was sales, uh, even though at the time I, I did not even understand that that's what I was doing. Yeah, that's a that's a great story, and uh, you know, particularly the great white sharks. I love that. Yeah, we I know somebody actually who uh, who does shark tours. Uh, you know, where they go down in the cages and all that good stuff. No. Um, yeah. So okay, so you went into sales, and as you said, you didn't get any formal training. You were kind of thrown in, and especially during the mortgage boom, I, I was involved in that industry at the time as well. So I, I understand. Um, what that was like. I was at the Mortgage Bankers Association at the time. Um, so you got no formal training. At what point did you start to either train yourself or get some or get some outside help in order to uh, in order to improve or, or become a less order taking salesperson and somebody who actually could build a career? Yeah. So I was in the mortgage business for a few years. Things were going well, but for some reason it didn't excite me. Obviously there's a lot of people who made a lot of money, but it was like, I just don't, I don't know. Just helping people get into a lot of debt, buying houses they probably don't need didn't excite me at the time. Um, <laughs> and, and so I went from that and I saw the need of people who are in foreclosure going to lose their homes and being able to help them. And then also you know, help investors who were looking for real estate, but keep people from losing their homes if they couldn't. Um, it was at that point into that business with a partner of mine where I realized what persuasion and sales really meant when you've got someone who's literally facing a deadline with a sheriff that will be coming after the house goes to auction and they still won't make a decision or the right decision. And so I started studying like David Sandler. I uh, got my hands on some of his training, started reading lots of books, started reading about psychology, even reading about addictions uh, like financial uh, money addiction, all kinds of things to understand like why people do or don't do. Uh, the things they do. Um, and really it, it drove it home too. When I was unsuccessful at helping someone keep their home, I would go to the auction and I'd watch the property go up for sale and then go to the highest bidder. And then the sheriff come and not to gloat, but to impact on myself. Like this is what failure looks like as a sales professional and to do whatever it takes to not do that. Right. So to help that person, not just me, they're the ones that are at the ultimate cost. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a great uh, that's, a, that's a great point that you just made there because I, I I there's probably plenty of salespeople or people out maybe not salespeople but maybe people in sales jobs 
<laughs> out there who who are listening to this and maybe they haven't asked themselves that question like what is the impact of what i'm doing because mm -hmm. it's not a, if, if you want to make a successful career it's not a transaction right you are doing you are helping somebody you're the conduit to help somebody to get a product or service in the case you were talking about is a home but the impact of it is to go beyond just this the selling the transaction part of it and actually into the need and the implications of the person actually uh, what the product or service will actually do for the person good or bad yeah and this is one of the big things like you mentioned in the beginning and why i wrote my book selling with authentic persuasion is because one of the big things that uh, people who end up defaulting to order taker mode which is they're they build rapport they create empathy maybe they ask questions people trust them people like them and they're hoping that's enough to close the deal uh order taker is not a negative term it's just usually a state of affairs it's a state of the stats mm -hmm. when you look at somebody's numbers you can go okay they're just taking the easy ones or the ones who are just ready to go you want to be a sales professional you want to be a deal maker it takes a particular system and process and a mindset one of the biggest ways that i've found when i coach and train people on their mindset side to shift out of order taker mode is understanding the cost of failure of that person who could use your service could buy your product could get to a better place as a result of working with your company if they don't what does that mean for them what is that going to cost mm -hmm. them again they might not be homeless but maybe if it's business to business what could that mean for their company their business the revenue the employees their own customers like that makes it where instead of me feeling like i'm trying to do something to you or i'm trying to sell something to you i'm doing this for you and i'm doing this yeah. with you and if i don't help you I should take that personal. Like I should feel bad as a person and a professional in the same way a doctor, if they can't get you to get that brain surgery, they take that personally and professionally. Uh, per, they like they see that as failure because they know that they have a solution for you and they've let you down and themselves. Yeah, I, I love that. That's a that's a fantastic point, uh, Jason. I, I, I love that whole idea uh, because I say this often to people like, you know, in 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 b2c you know if i make a consumer purchase if i go off and buy the latest like big screen tv the worst thing that's going to happen to me is my wife's going to go mental because we don't need it right <laughs> probably um but in a b2b in a b2b scenario making a purchase can be career enhancing it can be career limiting you know if it doesn't work out there's 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 a lot of emotion attached to it and i think as sellers sometimes we don't actually spend enough time empathizing with the person on the other end and realizing that the, the person or the group if it's a committee you know are making decisions that could have really great ramifications for them or negative ones depending yeah and i think the empathy is important right that's the second second part of the process i've developed called the authentic persuasion pathway so number two is empathy um but at some point in that process in the pathway you have to care you have to have the empathy you have to understand why it's important to them once you know that you have the thing that will help them get to a better place it's also about you doing everything you can to guide them across the finish line and not just die in that empathy i see a lot of salespeople, especially b2b where it's like i empathize and i know there's a committee and i know this like you let us know what they're looking for is wisdom they're looking for guidance yes. they want you to be a professional that says I have helped other people up the mountain successfully. I will help you up the mountain. I know how to get there. Come with me. It is safe. I know the best way to go. That's what they're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. But too many people, they, they make themselves the hero and they think they're just so amazing. And if they say enough amazing stuff that people are just going to be convinced, that's just the wrong approach. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I mean, I still think today a lot of people don't understand what empathy really is. Sometimes they think it's sympathy or just an excessive amount of sympathy or it's just like, oh, put your shoe, put yourself in the shoes of the other person. But to your point, there's more there's more than that, because it's not just put yourself in the shoes. It's then put yourself in the shoes and look out and see where you could go and see where the opportunities are. And I'm sure you've you've in, in, experienced this when you come up with the a solution either to a problem they didn't know existed or a solution that they had never thought of. I mean, then you start to get into into fantastic relationship territory. 
Yeah, and you're bringing some value. And I think the big thing is is sympathy versus empathy. Sympathy generally is you're in a bad place. Let me come hang out in your bad place with you and try to make <laughs> you feel better. But we're both in this bad place, right? Think of a friend who's had a bad breakup or whatever, like anything. You think Empathy is you're in a bad place. I want better for you. I'm going to come to where you're at and then I'm going to try to help make things better. Not just make you feel better, but like I care about you because I care. <laughs> I'm not going to let you stay stuck. It's because I care, right? That's the important part. Um, and then you're again, going back to what, what you just said goes back to sales is something you should be doing for somebody and with somebody sales is service in my opinion, right? It's ultimate service, mm -hmm. which is I care about you. I empathize. I care about you as a human or as a business, an employee of a business doesn't matter. I want to see you succeed with or without my product. If I have the right thing for you, here it is. Like I'm going to help you and here's why. And that's where the, conviction of the persuasion and the sales professional comes from not i have to make a, make a quota i need to hit my numbers it's the end of the quarter and my boss told me i have to get more sales uh and so i'm going to push everybody it's i just want you to succeed and i'm going to do whatever i have to to help you get unstuck yeah and that is something that Tra um, transmits right you can't fake that it's like the authenticity i love i love when i read nowadays about people saying be more authentic become more <laughs> authentic and i'm thinking well you kind of either are authentic or you're not um right so, but it's it, it's it's a funny it's a funny situation but if if you're going to make the connection you just talked about you have to have that authenticity and you can't fake it it's not something that you can fake no and that's what made me laugh slash angry i don't know how you can do both at once but i did <laughs> um early pandemic uh early mid 2020 um the linkedin community the sales community the sales gurus air quotes everybody out there and people at companies are like what do you do how do you how do you approach people right now in this pandemic and what's going on and they're like empathy empathize and care yeah. about your people and build relationships and on one side i'm happy thinking yes and on the other side i'm like wait, what the hell have you been doing, right? You're the reason why people hate salespeople and think sales is a dirty, gross word, because what have you been doing if you haven't been caring and empathizing this whole time? Uh, why is this new, right? It's always torn with that, right? Same thing with your yeah. authenticity. It's like, be authentic. It's like, wait, who, who have you? That's Again, that's why people don't like dealing with salespeople. Yeah, it you know it, it is so true, and and we all remember at the beginning of the pandemic how we were bombarded with all these, um, you know, um, mass emails from companies like, yep. oh, we really are wondering how are you doing in this pan to the point where you were like, if I get one more of these, yeah. I'm going to scream, right? <laughs> yeah. But it was, but it, again, it, it was, it, it lacked the, it lacked the authenticity. And to your point is, yeah, if you weren't doing this before, what, what exactly were you doing? And I think it is, I think the part of it, I think part of it is you just weren't treating humans in, as humans, because I think there's a lot of technology is wonderful. We're a technology company and there's a lot of great tools and everything to support, but it doesn't replace the human connection. And I think that's what had gotten lost. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of companies are looking on how do they scale? How do they succeed? How do they make great money without the messy human side? So let's bring in technology and let's bring in this business conversational intelligence and this call coaching. And then let's bring in, you know, IVRs and phone and let's bring in dialers. And it's like, okay, that's great to a certain point, except it's 2022 right? I will date us in this conversation. It's 2022. Yep. This day and age, robots haven't been able to take over uh, uh, difficult conversations with other humans. So we still need humans to talk to humans. And that's why companies hire me from all different kinds of verticals. I have so many different clients from B2C to B2B to retail furniture clients, like all of it, because at the end of the day, it's not B2C, it's not B2B, it's H to H, right? It's human yep. to human. You have to take one messy, confused, challenged person, which is your salesperson. And if you're a salesperson, you're listening to this, don't be offended. We're all that way. And then you have to talk to another person who doesn't know what they want, who's messy and, and scared and confused and worried about making the wrong choice, like you said, and you've got to get them to make the right choice for them. And that takes skill and that takes humans, um, which is why no matter who I work with, there's so many of these fundamentals that if you do these, it takes care of a lot of the salesy stuff that people think is important. 
And and the other part of that is genuine curiosity, because that's the other part mm -hmm. that I see people, as you said, I mean, people can go through a whole questioning. I mean, I could have my list of questions and my process and go through <laughs> it. But if I'm not, if I'm not actually genuinely interested or curious about your business, about what's going on with you, no. um, you know, then again, I'm, I'm falling flat. And I think that's the thing is, I mean, some people have to rediscover their, their curiosity. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because I have, I can think of the line of managers and owners who are frustrated with the salesperson who just doesn't ask questions the way they would ask it, or doesn't seem to ask any questions or gets off a call with a deal they didn't close where it's like, yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, I guess I could have asked that. Oh, why didn't you ask that? Oh, I don't know. Like I, I, I didn't think it was important. Like just people who aren't curious, uh, what I can tell you, and this is uh, one of the chapters in my book talked about the sales talks about the sales success traits and making yourself into a sales professional. There's a lot of people who will debate that sales professionals, successful sales superstars are born, not made. And I disagree with that. I think there's some people who have some traits that lend itself well, and they've been working on a long time. It's that person who's been selling since four years old. You meet them at 30 years old, they've been selling for 26 years, right? They're just really good at it. They, they put in their 10,000 hours as per Malcolm Gladwell, right? Um, then there's also some traits that people think are good at sales that aren't. There's some ones that are really gross that you know, leave a wake of destruction. Um, but if you want to change, you can make yourself that. That's why number two on my list is curiosity. Number one is openness. Number two is curiosity. And I'll tell you, as a guy who did not like people and did not do well with people for most of my early life, I was very curious about science and sharks, not people. And then I shifted that and started getting curious about people. And now I'm ultra curious about everyone I chat with and everything and business and all of that. Um, so I agree. You can reinvent yourself. At any point, you can go, I need to be curious. I need to be a detective in every conversation I have and just try to get to the root of, of yeah. this. And, and there's one thing that I tell everyone, here's the one thing you need to know more than anything else. Um, and then it's about you getting to that point. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree. And the, and the other part of this is as a, not just the curi the intellectual curiosity and all of that, but then it, it's, it's validating, right? Cause that's the other thing that people really, when, when I'm in, when somebody tries to sell to me, do you ever go away with that feeling afterwards and you go, Hmm, I don't think they really understood what I was looking for here, or you have to have follow up <laughs> conversation because the person on the other end, the, the salesperson never validated never came back and said okay so listen having at this conversation here's what i'm hearing from you is this correct right i mean just validating things because that's such a that is that is very um you know we like that that's respectful when somebody actually takes the trouble to validate and make sure they understood exactly what you were talking about yeah and 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 i know that our our, our time here and our show is your show is not super super long otherwise we could go into a massive mm -hmm. amount of detail on this but thing the thing the thing that to for everyone to understand everyone in sales all of your non-customers all of your prospects and i'm going to say all and i'm going to make a hundred percent guarantee uh, no matter what you're selling and who you're talking to which it's pretty amazing if i can say they're afraid of one thing but it's true um Everybody who is not a customer of yours is afraid of change. They are afraid of change for so many deep reasons. I'm not going to go into detail here, but I put a lot of stuff out online. That's it. Now, some people say they're afraid of this and looking bad or making a mistake. All of that goes down to fear of change from our primal side of when we were living in caves and, and nomads. Like We don't like change. And so mm -hmm. your job is to help them feel safe with that change. And so one of the things is they've got to know that this is going to be the right decision. Problem is most people in sales, because they're not curious, they're not trained right, they don't understand what their actual job is. They think, uh, I'm amazing. My product is amazing. My company says we're amazing. We are the hero of the story. I'm just going to tell everyone how amazing we are. Instead of actually asking questions, they ask a few, they check the box saying that I ask questions. And so when you're talking about the validating, the problem is, is most people don't actually have anything to validate because they don't actually know anything about the client because they think they're just there to be uh, the hero and save the day. And who you are and what you do and what you want doesn't matter because I'm the salesperson. I'm uh, I'm the hero and I've got a quota. Yeah, absolutely. And in, and in the world we live in today, let's face it, 
rightly or wrongly, the perception of the consumer, whether it's business or, or, or consumer, is that most things are commoditized. There's not really that big a difference between any product or service. I mean, that's the perception. So oftentimes it's the salesperson that can make the difference or, or does make the difference. And I don't think that sometimes they realize that you are the competitive advantage here if you are willing to be authentic, to really find out what's going on, and then to see whether your product or service can really deliver the results that the person's looking for. Yeah. And short term, the people who are in sales that can build those relationships well and have the charisma or uh, tell stories or use persuasion or manipulation uh, and or build relationships, they will get the sales short term. They will convince someone, hey, this is great. You want to work with the people like them. You know, that person at the center of the attention in the room that everyone's drawn to. Hmm. The challenge is, is a lot of times that person isn't selling on substance and isn't actually telling the full truth about what a product can and can't do. And so then the person becomes a customer and then there's a disconnect. Um, you've got to have both, right? You've got to be selling the good and the bad of what your product does because everything has a trade off. And then you yep. have to build relationships that are going to sustain for as long as that person should be a client. And unfortunately, most sales organizations, sales parts of companies are just focused on the metrics now and not the company as a whole and the customers as a whole. And it's just too much of this like short-sighted sell, build relationships, sell, and let operations deal with it. Let onboarding deal with it. Let customer service deal with it, right? Like that's not my job. Yeah, and that is exactly uh, what you can't do anymore because of the whole concept of customer experience from the moment they yeah. interact with your brand to, because let's face it, there's nothing more frustrating than dealing with a salesperson. You think it's fantastic and they were fantastic with you and everything went well. And then they kick you over the fence to onboarding or operations or whatever it is, or and you never hear from them again. Or when you do, you can tell they're kind of irritated. Yeah. Or you, the person in sales is great. It seems great. They told you all yeah. the great things it can do. You get over to onboarding and you're like, wait, I didn't know I had to do that. I didn't know that was involved. Mm -hmm. Wait, I didn't know I had to close this or open this. Or You see it all the time where salespeople are selling the highlights and setting someone up for you know, disappointment. Yeah, I, I I worked with one uh, one uh, individual one time, and his his favorite catchphrase was "I sell the sizzle, not the steak." Correct, <laughs> correct. Yeah, and um, and then that becomes a problem. That becomes a problem for the company and for the customers. Um, and that's and and there's unfortunately too many of those organizations that have too many of those people that they just continue to let sell in that way and uh, just hoping to keep it up with the retention department, which is terrible and painful. And as the internet is more and more and reputation is more about what people sure. read online, before they even talk to you the first time, you're just gonna crush yourselves under the weight of those bad sales strategies. No, no, 100%, 100%, Jason. Um, listen, this has been fantastic. Uh, the book uh, is called Selling with Authentic Persuasion, Transform from Order Taker to Quota Breaker. Who doesn't want to do that? I'd highly recommend that you check it out. All Jason's information will be below this uh, video, including the book. But before we go, Jason, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Uh, so for me, I am a mindset and scalability expert. I focus on sales, sales team, sales operations. Uh, as much as we've talked about sales so far, I, my brain is actually operation focused. So I look at it from an operational system perspective and how do you help people succeed in their sales role, close more deals and make more money. Um, and the best way if anyone wants to get a hold of me, they can go to jasoncutter.com, which is a hub for everything that I've got. Um, or you can always reach out to me on social media or email me jason at cutterconsultinggroup.com. I have some other eBooks and guides that may help, uh, depending on if you're looking for help with overcoming objections or motivating your team. Yeah, and I'd highly recommend that you go to Jason, jasoncutter.com. I was just looking at it here. It is absolutely packed with great resources. And, and here's the great thing, Jason, I know you'll agree with this, is the unfortunate reality is that there is still so much poor and mediocre stuff going on out there that if you, if you just invest a little bit of time in yourself as a salesperson, you can stand out very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, 100%. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Jason. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again really soon. Thank you.